okay so good afternoon and uh, let's wait for one or two minutes uh, right okay so uh, let's start our class right now so before we uh, start the class let me share the screen first Can you see the screen? Yes, sir. Okay. So as you see uh, that uh, uh, we are going to start the unit two. Okay. And the first unit included uh, business ethics, concepts, basic concepts, theories, and uh, some other uh, associated topics uh, with business ethics now in the second unit we will have some more specific uh, topics regarding the concept of business ethics but we will have some more particular specific topics uh, right <laughs> <clears throat> okay uh, so uh, you know many of the students were joining late so that's why i took a little time but uh, now we will continue uh, so in the unit 2 we will see business ethics with some specific and uh, particular topics right so move ahead now um, as you see that the first topic of the unit 2 is principles of personal ethics now what are the criteria of personal ethics by ethics we already came to know um, that uh, ethics is uh, a concern it includes morality it includes etiquette it includes mindset attitude many things it includes in itself okay but uh, if we label it into different categories uh, so um, many labels can come out uh, like uh, personal ethics so um, if we look at personal ethics then what are the principles of personal ethics so we will look at uh, some of the important principles of personal ethics number one is concern and respect for the autonomy of others uh, so um, you need to concern for the autonomy of others you need to have some sense of respect for the others okay and that uh, the, the sense of respectability is the key key factor in personal ethics second point uh, is uh, honesty and the willingness to comply with the law of the land okay so you should have sense of honesty everybody knows about it though it doesn't work 
right now but still we should uh, imply it we should apply it we should at least have the sense of honesty that is very much important though it sound very cliched backdated but still it has its own existence um, in the current time so honesty and the willingness to comply with the law of the land you have to have some willingness you have to have some sense of honesty if you keep uh, dishonesty with you all the time some day or later you know the boomerang um, will come back to you some day so it is the nature of the law as 99% uh, of human beings consider this the third point is fairness and the ability not to take undue advantage of others so you need to uh, be fair you need to have uh, fair affairs with all human beings whoever are related to your life and the ability not to take undue advantage of others okay so you should not take advantage over others weaknesses uh, next point is benevolence and preventing harm to any creature uh, you should be ethical enough in your personal life in your personal attitude in your personal way of your life that uh, you should be benevolent you should not be violent you should be protective uh, to also uh, creatures in are uh, not necessarily human creature all the time but also you should uh, be protective of animal creature you know nowadays people are uh, you know people started working on animal studies okay many many concepts are coming up uh, many many research are coming up uh, you know there is a new concept that is coming up if, um, those um, who, you know, who are interested to uh, read more about it you can contact me later on the topic that i am going to refer is called post humanism okay this is out of the syllabus but still has some reference in it it depends on how you utilize this concept but on the other hand even out of the syllabus you can excel on this topic this topic doesn't have any fixed discipline the concept of post humanism uh, in which uh, uh, these uh, human beings are no longer at the center of the universe uh, this concept you know uh, we used to uh, consider this concept since time immemorial uh, because be, um, um, uh, as uh, human beings are always at the center of the universe in the middle age uh, you know god was considered at the center of the universe but our, after science uh, revolution and so many renaissance uh, happened in england uh, and uh, then you know that uh, influenced many other countries many studies many disciplines and then people came to know that yes men human beings are at the center of the universe because they have free will they have reason they have imaginative flight so they are at the center of the universe but in the 21st century research are saying um, that uh, no human beings are not only the center of the universe all the species are equal if nature if the elemental aspects of nature do not exist then human beings cannot exist human beings are called human beings because there are some creatures who are not called human beings there are animals animals defines human beings okay if you are how do you say you are a human being i can say yes i am a human being because i am not an animal okay so animals the presence of animals defines the existence of human beings so there are all kinds of species be it living objects be it non-living objects and more importantly 
what it adds to these one or two species is machines technology non living matters non living objects uh, so human beings non human beings nature other species machines all are existing together no nobody and nothing is at a permanent level nothing is superior to others all are equally living together actually i am actually talking about cohabitation okay and the last point that i need to make is uh, this is a kind of cosmopolitan nature that we can see in usa in some of the places where, where suppose in a 20 story building flat in apartment many people from different culture different religion different mindset different rituals different food habits celebrate many things together that is what we call cosmopolitan culture so we can see cosmopolitan culture even in the species different species so this is the concept of post humanism and this um, can be understood from multiple perspective uh, because uh, it can be understood from literature it can be understood from genetic engineering it can be understood from machines it can be understood from mechanical engineering it can be understood from xenotransplantations many many disciplines are there which uh, can be uh, useful to understand post humanism so this is the one of the mo most important concepts in the current time post humanism which can be understood from any kind of glass any kind of lens so Mm, this is uh, for you to excel and uh, after the class if you have any question I will you know I will love to uh, discuss with you on this topic anyway we need to come back to our main concern that is the principles of personal ethics okay so I was oh, you were talking about uh, benevolence and preventing uh, preventing harm to any creature right you should be species cosmopolitan to other creatures as well you should not prevent you should not cause any kind of harm upon others next is people are motivated to be ethical for the following reasons number one most people want to maintain a clear conscience and would like to act ethically under normal circumstances okay so we, uh, many people are there who like to maintain a clear conscience okay live and let live sort of attitude approach of life that is well and good next is it is natural for people to ensure that their actions do not cause any injury whether physical or mental to others okay so you should always make it sure in your mind that you should not be held responsible for some, you know inflicting tortures in somebody's body or in somebody's mind that should be your ethics okay i should not be held responsible i will not do such a thing which will you know put me held responsible for somebody's injury be it mental be it emotional or even physical right so these are personal ethics principles next is people are obliged to obey the laws of the land all right so we need to apply the obey the laws of the land uh, next is social and material well-being depends on one's ethical behavior in society you know what kind of social behavior you have what kind of social index contact you have what kind of material well-being you are or you have depends on your ethical manner depends on your ethical approach okay uh, so that's the point we need to keep in mind now coming to a slight different one that is uh, principles of professional ethics professional ethics principles 
number one is impulse you know all these things just you need to say make a systematic note of it and make a clear idea of it but all the points you already know principles of personal ethics number one is impartiality obviously you know what he, uh, uh, he likes uh, i mean you know third party never likes impartiality right if you person if you would make some partiality with another party and third party observes that definitely that is not ethical uh, definitely mm, that is uh, not something that is very much encouraging okay neither it is welcoming at all so you should be objective you should be impartial you should be unbiased next is openness you need to open up yourself to different exposures of experiences okay you need to open up yourself to different disclosures of experiences okay so you need to put yourself in a in a number of challenging situations where you can learn certain things and will come up now uh, with uh, new learning and experience so this is the point that you understand easily confidentiality okay so certain confidentiality we need to maintain right uh, we you know as a teacher uh, need to maintain a number of some confidentialities okay uh, regarding documents regarding uh, you know uh, marks regarding many other official uh, arrangements okay so confidentiality is a very much important uh, aspect in a workplace that you are also going to face very soon after certain after a couple of years and those who will be you know enrolling yourself in jobs in different of different nature different type confidentiality will be something that you need to maintain and that only comes from trust in the in some of the previous classes we already talked about gandhian uh, temperament of ethics trusteeship of ethics now that trusteeship of ethics can be applicable in this case confidentiality trust okay nobody will tell you that uh, uh, we trust you so um, you keep this trust with you yourself okay don't break this trust nobody comes and tells these things to you nobody will give a guideline about trusteeship nobody will give a guideline about confidential issues no just one or two line somewhere in your guideline may be written but this is something that is you know that you experience that you already already and that is quite understandable okay next is uh, due diligence or d- duty of care so you need to be dutiful fidelity to professional responsibilities you should be you should have some fidelity you right uh, you should have some fidelity some loyalty to the responsibilities that will be assigned upon you and avoiding potential or apparent conflict of interest so it would be better if you keep avoiding if you you know uh, overlook if you don't go with the conflicting uh, issues within the workplace because we are talking about professional ethics so these are the points that we need to keep in mind for professional ethics and these are very very important questions uh, you know the, the, uh, these important questions will be coming up in the exam either in short question or long question or in question of any type but these questions definitely will come so make a note of it next point is uh, code of conduct and ethics for managers code of conduct and ethics for managers now you know code of conduct what are the manners that you should do what are the dresses that you should wear at a particular occasion what are the foods that you should eat at a particular place what are the um, issues that you should talk about in a particular place okay suppose i am uh, suppose you are uh, enjoying with your friends uh, in somewhere 
in a place and uh, i suddenly uh, you know uh, met you and if i start uh, if i start asking assignment 1 or assignment 2 why didn't you send it who did be at all uh, uh, you know expected no so you need to know what are the issues uh, that you should talk about in which occasions in which time not time exactly but in which atmosphere isn't it so code of conduct and ethics for managers so here it is written that it is for managers but all the uh, ethics for managers can be applicable in all kinds of people number one is integrity you should have characters integrity you should have your words integrity if you say something upon promise you need to fulfill it isn't it so integrity integrity is the cornerstone of all values a business manager should be morally upright it is this characteristic that distinguishes a professional manager from a mercenary okay so you we need to have a sense of integrity if integrity falls people will not take your word seriously any more next is impartiality that we also discussed you know in that part impartiality objective so impartiality a manager should look at and treat all aspects of an issue in a fair and unprejudiced manner okay uh, suppose uh, your teacher treats uh, um, some students in a different way in a biased way and some uh, other and the rest of the students in a unbiased way so you know that is uh, that cannot be uh, called an impartial treatment to the students isn't it so impartiality must be there that uh, equal unbiased treatment next is responsiveness to the public interest okay suppose you are working in a job you, you know you, in any kind of workplace so what it says look at it uh, i'm going to read it out though a manager is paid to serve the interests of the stockholders of the company public interest is no less important okay public interest is also very much important hmm. in fact manager should consider it as of paramount importance if they have to be successful in their tasks okay suppose you are working in a company and you are going to launch a product after launch of the product uh, you don't bother about the consumability of the products by the people by the consumers okay your job is just to launch new products from your company the moment the products get launched in the market your job is over but responsiveness to the public interest will be alive in you only when you take care of the effects of those launch products how people are grading the products how people are feeding back to you upon the products how people are uh, comfortable uh, with the products okay so that is what you say about responsiveness to the public interest okay when well, nowadays we have this word customized red customized dresses customized this customized that what is that actually that is customer demanded products that is called customized in a basic sense it can be understood in different meaning in different uh, uh, discipline studies that is different but what does it mean basically that i told next is uh, accountability accountability is one of the basic characteristic of a good business manager business managers are responsible for their own actions obviously and uh, are accountable to all the stakeholders right uh, and within stakeholders what comes stockholders creditors employees consumers government society at large okay so uh, in the case of accountability uh, if you are in a manager position of being manager then you had to 
take care you have to take charge of these responsibilities and you have to maintain all these uh, um, positions and you have to keep track of the maintenance of these positions okay next is honesty a cardinal cardinal means very important cardinal ethical value that a manager should possess in this quality manager should be fair just and sincere both in character and behavior they should not indulge in cheating or stealing or uh, should be free of deceit or untruthfulness so it is needless to explain that what honesty means everybody knows what is honesty though many of us do not practice in practical life and as i said already that though it some nowadays uh, you know if people uh, shows some honesty they become victim of certain situations sometimes and uh, some you know i even i have experienced i have observed many situations where i have seen that uh, honesty nowadays sounds a laughable idea very laughable ridiculous idea people laugh at these things when you say he is honest or she is honest or you are honest or i am honest people uh, reacts with uh, you know abusive conversation without any hint of respect so honesty works but uh, in a very rare situations of today's time but uh, hope it will increase more than before anyway so transparency transparency means a good business manager should be transparent and set standards for others to flow, uh, follow they should be frank and open their actions should be easily discussed and understood by others if you maintain transparency definitely in the workplace transparency uh, should be maintained okay actually what uh, in interesting problem that is coming up that uh, what we are reading here theoretical part and at the same time i am trying to balance with the practical uh, situations of these ideas so that uh, it would be better for us to have a balance between theory and practical implications of those theory that's why i am simultaneously you know uh, talking of uh, two things at a time so transparency then uh, honesty accountability responsiveness to the public interest impartiality integrity these are the code of conduct and ethics now evolution of ethics now if you see how ethics uh, evolved how ethics developed uh, what are the changes that led ethics into its growth and development over a long period of time so if you see i have taken all these informations from the book called business ethics by ac ferrando you must refer to this book all the details have been taken from the book that is very easy uh, and very uh, authentic answers are there mm. before the 1970s there were a few writers like raymond bomhart who dealt with ethics and business okay so you must uh, take a screenshot or you can take a note of it but just take a note of it ethical issues were mostly discussed as part of social issues men of religion and theologians continued writing and teaching isn't it you know ethics existed since time immemorial isn't it uh, ethics existed before um, the time of uh, you know civilization at least in the religious scriptures professors in b schools wrote and continued to talk about corporate social responsibility 
Right, so these are the topics that um, started growing up. <coughs> the catalyst that led to the field of business ethics was the entry of several philosophers who brought ethical theory and philosophy to bear on a variety of issues. So slowly uh, but steadily uh, ethics you know uh, takes its voyage, takes its journey and it uh, um, evolves you know, over uh, changing periods of time. Okay and if we look at uh, some foundational books that uh, had come up was uh, one ethical theory and business by Tom Buchamp and Norman Bowie. Next is ethical issues in business, a philosophical approach by Thomas Don uh, Donaldson and Patricia Warren, and then moral issues in business by Vincent Berry. Okay, these are the books that were considered to be the foundationalist uh, launch pads of ethics. You can say. Okay. Now, uh, we will move ahead because all the books, all the details that we talked about around the time of 1970s and 80s, uh, basically 1970s actually, 1974, 1973, these were the times when uh, these books were published and served a wide range of readership. <clears throat> Next is uh, in 19... 82, Richard D. George uh, brought out Business Ethics while Manuel G. Uh, Velasquez uh, published his Business Ethics. This is the, the name of his book, uh, Concepts and Cases. These are the name of the books. Why I am referring to all the name of the books important for your exam? And uh, second point, why I am referring? Because these are the books that created a lot of interest. These are the books that caught our high range of attention from the public on this subject you know then business ethics becomes a course and they you know this course uh, has been offered in several management schools in different schools in different colleges in it uh, were offered in academics uh, right in it started offer in research projects in higher studies, in uh, many journals adopted this topic to run monthly, yearly, quarterly journals on themes of business ethics, periodicals, newspapers started writing about business ethics. Okay, media um, snatched the whole attention of ethics and continued applying business ethics in each and every contradictions of ethics in different uh, you know western countries Sir, uh -huh. in yes, classroom. Yes. yeah what yes sir book name this uh, professional ethics ethics books uh, you uh, i have to now. yes actually i have to search these books but uh, I have posted that book actually from where I have collected these details. But yes, uh, I can try to search uh, these books as well. Okay. Sir, if PDF may not be possible, just post the book names and author names. Uh, you need the book name and author name? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, which one uh, the names that I just mentioned or the book from where I collected these material you ma uh, name, named a mention now okay okay two minutes earlier okay so are you At not able to see the screen able to see the screen sir but uh, I had not taken that uh, screenshot okay 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 no problem uh, I have already posted this whole PPT in the Google Classroom. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank uh, you. So, okay, I can uh, still mention the names. Those books are very important. Uh, one is Ethical Theory and Business by Tom Buchamp and Norman Bowie. 
if you write ethical theory and business by tom in google it will automatically catch the rest of the detail and you can see other details of the book next is ethical issues in business colon a philosophical approach by thomas donaldson and patricia warhen and third is moral issues in business by vincent berry okay so these are the three books that have uh, given rise to the birth of business ethics as a uh, fully formed discourse as a fully formed uh, discipline as a fully formed subject which can be offered in schools which can be offered in academics which can be offered in research centers that's why we are reading on this subject okay and uh, many a uh, lot of interest many contradictions many comments criticism importance contribution came up and uh, that you know uh, led to uh, widespread importance of this book many journals took up as i already mentioned those things so all about just to establish and promote ethical practices all right and now uh, so that was you know i am basically picking up some dates right uh, whoever is fond of dates well dates has a different connotation i am referring to the dates not of edible kind not eatable kind but of historical kind mm, so i referred to 1970s then some books on 70s some books on 80s now we will see by the year 1990 what happened at that time business ethics as a management discipline was well established it got established well although the academicians from the start had sought to develop contacts with the business community the history of the development of business ethics as a movement in business though related to the academic developments can be seen to have a history of its own so the point that is uh, making that is uh, that we can make over here is that business ethics has its own history it has its own genealogy okay and even uh, what are the most proponent examples uh, within this you know uh, within this historical framework from 70s to 90s what are the other important political social and corporate factors that got, that happened mm, you can say in the next point that you can see already during the 1960s there was a rise of social issues in business many business practices came under social scrutiny during this time president john f kennedy unfailingly we know you know one of the american presidents right uh, president john f kennedy's consumer bill of rights reflected a new era of consumerism you know it can uh, excite me to talk more than one hour about consumerism consumerism is very much famous in us consumer refers to consumer culture and uh, now you know new york uh, chicago are the hubs for consumer market okay that you can say and uh, basically what do we mean by consumer culture i can simplify it by saying uh, that uh, suppose you want to go to a particular restaurant with your friend with your uh, yes uh, with your close relative so you need to have a corporate card of any kind of company any brand has to be there but it has to be a brand it has to be a current brand then only you will be you are eligible to book the table in that restaurant otherwise you can't and that also shows your uh, position in a urban sophisticated society so your individual identity is at complete loss your individual identity is at complete crisis 
if you do not possess those corporate branded cards in the back of your pocket right so uh, those cards will speak for you your speech doesn't matter if you have the cards then those cards will uh, give you higher position give you respectable position and many things many many movies are there on consumer culture uh, some day or later I can give some movie names mm, I which I gave one name of the movie and uh, the movie is uh, the wolf of Wall Street that is uh, very vulgar at certain point but still it depicts the exact image of Chicago and New York of consumer culture how consumer culture lead the American citizens into luxury and meaninglessness of life so that movie if somebody is interested you can watch on your own okay and uh, mm, the great actor we know Leonardo the Caprio was at the center of the cinematic narrative anyway so uh, the next point is that during the 1970s uh, professors teaching business began to write about business ethics and philosophers began to involve themselves in the theoretical evolution of the subject so yes uh, you can see so many socio political cultural factors uh, happened during this range of time during this uh, 20th century you know 1970s 80s 90s 60s uh, businessmen became more concerned with their public image and addressed ethics more directly from this historical development you can see that business ethics as a field of study and research is a fairly nascent subject so this is how you can say that business ethics is becomes very much important you know there is a um, ongoing endless contradiction between ethics and consumer culture so though this is not enlisted in the syllabus but someday if possible we can take it up uh, okay now coming to the next point oh my god uh, oh i see yes so coming to the next point that is honesty integrity transparency okay these are the three touchstones you know you know touchstone whatever you will touch it will become a gold stone it will become a pre precious stone okay so touchstone ethics uh, should be touchstone in your life you should always touch ethics mm, so touchstones of business ethics these are the things uh, honesty integrity transparency now what does it say well it says that ethical corporate behavior is nothing but a reiteration reiteration matlab repetition reiteration of the ancient wisdom that honesty is the best policy everybody mouths this line always not uh, everybody but uh, most people mouth this line you can say this is a lip service that people always give there is a uh, you know a pillar of difference between what people preach and what people practice okay so honesty is the best policy should be and must be the touchstone uh, of our life but looking at the current situations looking at the contemporary culture uh, it uh, falls into a uh, just lip service next is the dramatic collapse of the sum of the fortune 500 companies such as Enron Worldcom or the well-known auditing firm Anderson these are the firms these are the companies that showed that even successful companies could ultimately come to grieve you know even 
the legendaries, even the uh, un unparalleled uh, masters can fall down. Okay, even eminent persons can uh, have stage fright in all the stages of their life. Okay, so for every profession, we would think of a code of conduct or a set of values which has a moral content and uh, that would be the essence of ethics for that profession. And the last point that comes here, uh, there should be transparency in operations leading to already we told it um, that uh, transparency must be maintained which leads to accountability which should ensure safety and protect the interest of all stakeholders. So that is the point that you need to take it. Just some three to four points that you need to remember. You already understood um, the nerve of the issue like what is honesty, what is integrity and what is transparency. Okay. So, this is what you need to know. So, we are left with two slides. I think I should stop here. Otherwise, otherwise it will become too much. Mm, so, okay. Now, uh, I would like to mm, end up here by saying that uh, this is all about personal ethics. This is all about professional ethics and we discussed the evolution of ethics. Um, you uh, please remember the dates, please remember the name of the books and please know the brief history that how ethics evolved, how ethics uh, changed, uh, how ethics moved into different forms, into different timelines, historical timelines. Uh, what happened in 1960s, in 70s, in 80s, in 90s and though it is not written in the book but I would want all of you to know what happened in after 1990s in relation to business ethics, in relation to personal ethics and professional ethics. We should know contemporary business ethics as well by google you can get many material upon it what is ethics in 21st century what do you, what do you call ethics now uh, so we can take it up later on so this much for today and i am going to stop this lecture <laughs>